I spent a long time playing around with this design and trying to improve it. And one thing that became clear is that I needed to remove this hammock and it didn't have anything to do with how it was attaching because I was kind of playing with the idea of just having it go all the way across in here. But basically it kind of comes down to the way that the cats use this and climb around that the hammock looked like it was going to be more in the way than anything. And it's also just kind of cluttered in here. So what I decided to do is make this piece as kind of a ramp that will be carpeted and same with this platform up here so that they can easily get up to this ledge without having to jump since it's kind of a tight squeeze up there. I'm still gonna use this scratching post and then this kind of little cage area there. And another thing I can do with that is I can pull it forward here if I need to and you know keep it there so that the cats have more room behind it. I also want to have this piece down here to be just kind of a nice S curve. I couldn't really make a nice curve like that in SketchUp, but I think you can kind of get the idea here that they should have room. This one will also have a rug on it so that they can grip it. One of the things I was noticing when the cats are playing on this is that they try to go from here up to here without going through the hole and through that box and they can't do it with this wood surface. There's nothing for them to grab a hold of. So, you know, I wasn't intending for them to use it that way, but they seem to kind of want to use it that way. So I'm gonna leave this one as it is. They just have to go through that way if they wanna get up here. But for the rest of them, I need to have some sort of rug on there so they can grip and climb up the way they wanna climb. I'm doing a little test here with this sizal rope. I want to wrap it around a post for phase two of the catification. But somebody mentioned in the comments that you can use wood glue to kind of like hold this in place. So what I've done is I wrapped this rope around here and I, I spread glue all over this board. I've clamped the two ends down. I guess when I would do it for real, I would probably drive a screw through the ends to hold them in place. But I just wanna see if this works out. This probably isn't the best test because I wanna do it on more of a round shaped post. Yeah, check this out. I took the clamps off. It's been a couple of hours and that's basically like, let me see, there wasn't much glue down there. Pretty strong. I think this will work. I also saw where you could use hot glue, but hot glue to me has always been just really messy to use. And I like the fact that wood glue will have a longer set time, have a longer working time with it. Every time I say woodworking in the news, I get comments from people thinking that I'm about to say woodworking in the nude. <laughs> I don't personally do that nor recommend it, but hey, I don't judge how you wanna spend your Saturday night. <laughs> I came across this really nice article from New Linux, Illinois. Sounds like a small town, doesn't it? Someday New Linux and Old Linux will settle their differences and come back together into Linux. Anyways, this is a great story about a kid named Chris Arnold, nine years old, and he's, uh, it sounds like he's been woodworking for years, but he has his own woodworking business now called Elementary Woodworkers. It's so cool when I hear about kids who are starting businesses like that. He said, I wanted to build my own darts. It's funny because that was the, that was the thing that got him started. <laughs> I just, I want to make darts. It says from darts, he moved on to pens, pizza cutters, wine bottle stoppers, and coffee scoopers. It sounds like he's been woodworking since he was a four, and he also got notice from the mayor of New Linux. He wants to start a young entrepreneur's business fair. Nine years old. You know what I was doing when I was nine? Nothing. Maybe sitting around watching Laverne and Shirley. That's really cool. Great job, Chris. I'll include a link down in the description if you want to check out this article. I picked up 
two of these rugs yesterday for six bucks a piece at the gross out, the grocery outlet. You can't go wrong with that. So I can just cut these down to whatever size I need. And I may even put one of these down on that lower platform. I've got some carpet tape. We'll just see how well that holds. And I picked up 50 feet of sizal rope at the hardware store. I hope that's enough. I'm not really sure going around and around a post how much that will take. But you know, there's a way to figure that out using science. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna make that post by gluing and screwing together a couple of scrap two by fours. I don't have to get fancy with this at all. It's all gonna be covered up. Another good suggestion somebody had in the comments last time was to make the post and then cut off all four corners to just make it into an octagon. That was most, much more of a rounded shape. And once that, once that rug is on there, you won't even know that it's an octagon. So I might do that. I'll need to remove these screws if I do that though. Couple of things I wanted to mention. Thank you all for your enthusiastic support about the woodworking jam. I think we were definitely gonna do this. A lot of you said, yeah, you'd be totally, totally into this. So I think what the easiest way to do this is I just kind of set up a, a burner email account, Gmail account. And so I'll just have you email all of your pictures in once you've, you've built your projects. That way you don't have to, you know, we don't have to deal with Facebook, Instagram, or, you know, cause everybody has email. So I'm kind of thinking it'll be not this weekend in, but next weekend, so I have time to kind of figure it all out. I'll let you know what the topic is next Thursday, probably. So you have three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to work on your project. This is gonna be so much fun. And so if it works out, we'll do more of these. This will be the this will be the woodworking summer jam. How about that? I'll come up with a good topic to surprise you with, and then you have to build something that is your representation of that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that I was on the YouTube channel called Belts and Boxes. If you haven't heard of this channel, it's it's a lot of fun. It's kind of they do a lot of like this compilation stuff, finding like, you know, best woodworking videos of the week and that and that sort of thing. But they asked me if I would do you know a really quick interview for them and I said sure so you can check that out if you want it's a fun channel it's like it's like a it's like a kind of a TV format I guess you would call it it's a couple that does this show together and they're a real cute couple and it's a highly it's like super highly polished production not like not like this rinky dink operation I'll include a link down in the description if you want to check that out one quick piece of mail I wanted to mention real quickly because it is from Robert who is a, uh, he's the VP of sales at LaCroix, LaCroix water, I guess. I've never tried a LaCroix before, but it was really nice. He sent me some coupons to try it out. It was like, it's like a swag. It's like if you went to the LaCroix booth at a, at a trade show. So, you know, some pens and stuff and pop sockets. So that was really nice. But here's the weird thing about it is that I have a feeling that that package kind of got lost in the mail because he says on here, I hope you can enjoy an ice cold LaCroix during day 29 lockdown. <laughs> day 29 i don't even remember that far back so i have a feeling that this thing was sitting around in a mail room somewhere for a, a long time but i'll i'll definitely give it a try it's like uh, mineral water sparkling sparkling water so I'll, I'll give it a shot thanks a lot robert i appreciate that okay okay i'll turn the lights on do you notice the lights on here do i look better it brings out the highlights in my eyes. You guys know that I've been I've been really into this mood lighting the past couple of months in my shop. I'm just using just using available light, but sometimes in the afternoon, well always in the afternoon, at least this time of the year, the sunlight just beats down on the front of my truck and on Wyatt's car and it reflects off of the windshield and it's just like, it's like a spotlight coming right into the shop. I can, I can barely see with it. And that was the, the problem I was having with that very last shot you probably saw. Yeah, I, yeah, I know, I, I could put like, like a, a blanket or something over the windshield and that would help reduce it. I'm really good at knowing the things I should just do, but I, I don't. Instead, I just complain about it. Now I can complain about these overhead lights. Ah, ah, they burn, they burn. I feel like I'm part vampire in here sometime. Well, I know what I wanted to show you. I was gonna show this to you today. I'll save this for the next time. This video is getting, I gotta fix this, it's broken. It's a, it's a thing that was my, it was my grandfather's. I mean, there's a nice story behind that. Bliss, you want a good vampire movie, check out Bliss. Not your typical vampire movie. And there you have it. We've made it to the end of another episode of Lockdown Woodworking.
on the Woodworking for Mere Mortals show. Brought to you by Steve. And Raid Shadow Legends. Have you guys seen about enough Raid Shadow Legends commercials to like last a life? Does it, do people actually play this game? I don't know. Hey, I guess people like it. I don't judge how you want to spend a Saturday night. All right, I'll see you next time.